I'm getting pissed off. It's been 72 hours since Trump been elected and we are not getting what we voted for. We're not. And I'm pissed about it. I'm pissed because I could have sworn that these celebrities and these women on The View and all these places said that if we voted Trump in, that they was going to leave the country. And now I saw that the, the View, they showing up in black dresses just to mourn the president election, Trump being elected. That is not what y'all promised us. Y'all said that if we voted for Trump, that they will leave the country and y'all ain't boarded a plane yet. And I'm getting frustrated. Trump, you gotta do something about this because I thought our vote was gonna count. We did vote for that. That's what they not understanding. We voted for y'all to leave the country. And I, I, I thought that I would be seeing airlines being, uh, you know, filled up. You can, you know, tickets will be hard to get because all the celebrities, all of Hollywood, all of these politicians, these journalists that said that if you get elected, that they was going to board the plane and leave. I can't no more. You know, I, I vote ain't counting already, y'all. <sighs> I guess maybe I'll give them another week, but you know, time is ticking. Get on the plane. All right. <laughs> well, there you go. Man, oh man, so the fallout continues. Ever since Kamala Harris lost her presidential bid, the women in our community have lost their minds. We have some that are shaving their heads, some that are not shaving their armpits, some that not wearing deodorant. I even heard that there are wives out here threatening husbands if you voted for Trump, I'm going to divorce you. My girlfriend gave me an ultimatum on which candidate I should vote for in the upcoming presidential election. When you say ultimatum, <laughs> it's like, vote for this person or I'm breaking up with you. Indirectly, what she said. Can we know who she wants you to vote for? She wants me to vote for Kamala Harris. Gentlemen, if your wife fixed her face to even say something like that, it's over. All right, just pack your stuff and leave because it's not going to get better. If she finds out that you voted for Trump, it's over. Oh, and another thing. Me and you will never be friends if you're voting for Donald Trump. Me and you will never remain friends if you're voting for Donald Trump. It's not a political difference. This is not the 2012, 2004 elections where we just disagree on how the economy should be ran. This is my life. If you are willing to vote for someone who gets to determine whether I live or die, if I have complications when I have a child, you will never sit in the presence of me. I had to cut off one of my closest friends because of this election. It is that deep. Anybody can go. I don't care who you think you are. Man, you should never take an ultimatum. I don't care who it is, a man or a woman. If anybody gives you an ultimatum, you just leave it. All right, walk away from the negotiation table. Just walk away. Now, it's funny that Kamala Harris is supposed to be black slash Indian. But you notice that the Indian community are not walking around shaving their head over Kamala Harris. They're not acting up over Trump winning the presidency. The only people that's doing that is the women in our community. The women with the real Indian hair are not acting up. The women with the fake Indian hair, they're the one threatening to shave their heads, walking around talking about, I'm not giving no sex to no man. Good, good. Now it's easier for us to identify you now. Please keep that up. Now, guys, Trump winning the presidency doesn't mean that it's over. All right? The war is not over. It's just one battle. These liberals are not going to give up. They're going to go even harder. You ought to see that just by some of his nominations that Trump announced, they're losing their minds and they're plotting to stop it, especially with Matt Gates. Matt Gates is a loyal guy. He's been straight up from the beginning. He's the one that exposed a lot of fuckery in the DOJ. Let's take a look. A diverse and inclusive force is a war fighting imperative. Now, this is on a slide at the Air Force Academy. General Clark, do you agree with that statement? I do agree with that statement, sir. So, I mean, were, were the Mongols diverse? 
Well, sir, uh, I, I'm not really uh, as versed on Mongol war fighting as how I about, am on how about the U.S. Vikings? war fighting. Were the Vikings diverse? Again, sir, I'm looking at our country, the most diverse country in the world. Sure, sure, but this is about a war fighting imperative. How about the, fight, the force in Ukraine? Are the Ukrainians fighting the Russians a diverse force? Sir, once again, uh, my concern is the people that I'm charged to build into leaders. The right, but you would, you would acknowledge that throughout history, including present history, that statement hasn't borne true in every example, right? Sir, what I would say is that those countries have to rely on the full force of their population to, to build a war fighting force yeah. to win our wars, and that's why it's important for us to be diverse, because sure, our nation... So let's look at the population that actually makes up the, the, the fighting force frequently. Now, we have more w men than women, right? 70-30-ish? That's right. correct. And, and of the men we have, most of them are not transgender men. Most of them are cisgender men, right? Uh, yes, sir. But yet, at our academies, we pu push something called the Brooke Owens Fellowship. Are you familiar with that? I am, yes, sir. And in that fellowship, it specifically says, if you are a cisgender man, this program isn't for you. So you just said that your answer on why we, why we do such this, this full hug of these diversity concepts is because it's all about the fighting force that we draw from, but you, you're literally pushing a program in the academies that says, if you're a cisgender woman, a transgender woman, a non-binary, agender, bigender, two-spirit, demigender, what's demigender? Well, sure, that's all of so, these people. You're a cisgender man. You don't even get to apply. Well. Do you know what gene demigender really means? I, I'm not really sure, sir. Right. So do you know what agender means? All one word, not a space gender, but agender. Uh, sir, I don't. Right. So here we are pushing a fellowship, calling for people that you don't even know what the words mean, and the number one group of people the cisgender men are excluded. Now, in the name of diversity, equity, and inclusion, should we be pushing programs that we can't define that exclude the largest group of service members? So I guess I'm just wondering, Mr. Attorney General, has anyone at the department told President Biden to knock it off with Hunter? I mean, you guys are charging Hunter Biden on some crimes, investigating him on, on others. You've got the president bringing Hunter Biden around to state dinners. Has anyone told him to knock it off? Our job in the Justice Department is to pursue our cases without reference uh, to what's happening in the outside world. But just yes or no, have you and done that? That is what we do. So it's a no? No one that I know of has spoken to the White House about the Hunter Biden case. I'm wondering of course then, not. okay, I got it, I got it. So Hunter Biden is selling art to pay for his $15,000 a month rent in Malibu. How can you guarantee that the people buying that art aren't doing so to gain favor with the president? The job of the Justice Department is to investigate criminal allegations. You have information. Are you investigating this? I mean, someone who bought Hunter Biden's art ended up with a prestigious appointment to a federal position. Doesn't it look weird that he's, making, he's become this immediate success in the art world as his dad is president of the United States? Isn't that odd? I'm not going to comment about any specific... Not going to comment, not going to investigate. So, of course, the establishment don't like Matt Gates. He's been a thorn in their side from the beginning, and they want to get rid of him. And the best way to get rid of Matt Gates is bringing out the old playbook, SEGS. I've just been handed a sheet with some breaking news on it. You're on the byline. Representative Matt Gates has been informed by officials at DOJ that they've concluded their investigation into possible sex trafficking crimes. What did they discover? Yeah, that's right. As you know, Chris, the Justice Department won't comment on anything they don't charge. But we've been told, my Hill colleagues have talked to officials in Gates's office, that the Republican congressman from Florida has been told he will not be charged in that Justice Department investigations into possible sex trafficking. If you remember, this has been a months long investigation by the Justice Department to figure out if Gates was involved in what led to a 17 year old girl being sex trafficked. There was a tax collector in Florida who alleged that Gates was part of that. But now we've been told the Justice Department has informed Gates he is basically off the hook in terms of these charges and that he will not be charged. 
Tonight, a Florida man is facing federal charges accused of trying to defraud the family of Congressman Matt Gates. Here's Stephen Alford, a convicted felon accused of fraudulently offering Gates a pardon from President Joe Biden in exchange for $25 million. So the scheme apparently involved Robert Levinson, a former FBI agent being held captive in Iran and who many believe is dead. According to prosecutors, Alford approached Matt Gates' father, former state Senator Don Gates, asked for money to free that hostage. If the elder Gates paid up, Alford allegedly promised to get a presidential pardon for the congressman. Congressman Gates is under investigation for possible sex crimes. That's according to published reports. Gates, of course, has denied any wrongdoing and has not been charged with any crimes. Tonight, the congressman claims other people were also involved in what he describes as an extortion attempt. That's all they got. They always use this when there's a Republican that's up and they don't like the Republican. They always pull out the sex allegations. They did that to Clarence Thomas. They did this to uh, Brett Kavanaugh. They do this a lot. If they don't like you, they're going to throw the sex allegations at you. And they did this to Matt Gates also. But this time it's not going to work. We got our eyes on it. We know your playbook. You tried this on Trump. It did not work on Trump. And Trump's giving all the Republicans how to beat this. We will rise above the lies, the smears, the ludicrous slanders from ludicrous and very, very dishonest reporters. So yeah, man, we're not gonna fall for this again. We're up on game and we need to protect Trump at all costs. Let's go.